I wasn't supposed to drop Savage America. I wasn't supposed to drop Beautiful Demon. It's another it's another situation where I had to turn to adversity and a privilege. I wasn't supposed to have no albums out. I was with God Complex with my big brother. And I did mad hot shit. Everybody, including my big bro. And then whatever labels was trying to pick niggas, I don't know what the fuck was going on. They was like Clinton a wild card. Clinton just he could shoot, he could rap, he could do whatever you want. How the fuck are we gonna get him in contract? What leverage do we have on him? And he been he been popped up. Sometimes bitches love him, sometimes they don't. He happy broke rich. What the fuck? What are you gonna tell us? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wasn't even I was like, you right, because you gotta come at me correct, man. You gotta come at me let me know whatever I can do. I could probably put on X, because X was there for three years ago now. I went beer, you know, I'm that type of person. You gotta give back to the energy that put you forward, and that's that's how you get that momentum. And it's like, mm, mm, mm. so, um, beautiful D one supposed to come out, Savage Mac one supposed to come out, and uh, I had to start Lord Family Records, and I had to drop that shit. I had to drop that shit. I, you know, I had to let it drop. I can't stop for no other man. And I said that shit in Corona, man. I, I, I can't, man. Um. And I didn't, and I know it wasn't, I was, I engineered a lot of it. Just think about this shit, I engineered a lot of that shit. I still engineered because of that, so I could mix now, I know how to use UAV equipment, real-time effects. I could do a bunch of different shit, and that's why I'm comfortable in my tones and changing up, because they wouldn't do it for me, because they couldn't, you know, they couldn't hold me down, they couldn't tell me, oh, we're going to get your mom out the hood. And my mom, a strong woman, she's going to do what she got to do anyway. They couldn't tell me, yo, I'm gonna look out for you and your homies. All right, we need somewhere to stay right now. We need something to eat right now. I was never simple-minded. I never dealt with promises and hope. I was always like, what's up? But you need me to rap, like, on a mic? You wanna pay me? Are you gonna show me cash first? No. I don't get <laughs> you like, you lying to me, nigga. Like, you feel me? Like, they all trying to swindle you when you're young and, you know, get you into this groove to think, do what they say, do what they want. And this could be whoever. I'm not, you know, pinpointing anybody because sometimes people have great intention. Sometimes people will see something that you don't see in yourself. But I didn't get that opportunity to meet those people at that time. So I was like, nah, I'm just doing myself. And I dropped Beautiful Demon and I was singing. One of this, the first song on Beautiful Demon, Drown. So this nigga Lee, uh, uh, that he's like my bro, Saint producer. Like we all, do shit together, you know, produce, whatever. <laughs> this nigga Lee started crazy, like, I ain't gonna give you the fucking record to drop. I'm like, nigga, yes, you are. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yes, you are, like, and I'm, this is the crazy thing. I threw some shit up on SoundCloud. They have like 200,000. I don't even fuck with SoundCloud right now, but I'm coming back. We'll be back. We'll be back. I couldn't fuck with SoundCloud, and I'll show you. They hit up SoundCloud and they was like, oh, they didn't give me permission to drop the record. And there was like a copyright infringement with SoundCloud. You don't need to have legal proof. You could just start a dispute and they'll take records down unless you're a label with the power to hit up those that be at SoundCloud. Shit fucked up my old release. I never hit like a quarter million before. So they took the song down because the producers, you know, was on some funny shit. I was like, and then I, I registered with BMI. I registered my copyright in my song, sent it back like those SoundCloud was stuff. Like, nah, nah, nah you're not enough. Hence, Spotify, beautiful demon. I was like, fuck it. Now we, I, I gotta do something. They done took my shit down. They missed it like a lot. Like, it come my neck. I gotta do something. So um, that was why I did that. I, you know, oh, the producer ain't want to do my shit. I'm like, well, I'm the producer. Took my ass on that skateboard with that Glock. Right over there is fucking shit. Yeah, right. You ain't never seen a skateboarder with a gun, right? But you see a bunch of them now. You see them, nigga? You see a bunch of them now. At that time, they didn't, even, they didn't understand that that was a person. They didn't know that people could be like that. But he's a skateboarder. He's a shooter. He's... What the fuck? Oh, <laughs> so, yo, you know what I mean? Slid on like, yo, give me my record, bro. I cannot tell you a lot of niggas that'll pull a gun on somebody for their record. That's how much I believe in my shit. I can't tell you a lot of people that do that. You know how much you risking? 
I went to that nigga house. I knocked on his fucking door. Lee no falling to tell you. And that's my nigga now, feel me? But that's how I get down. Like, you're not going to stop. Well, and look at us now. Him, me, all of them. Like, it is what it is. But at, he got platinums now. You know what I mean? At that time, he didn't. So, that's how beautiful demon, man. A demon was in me and I had to get that bitch out. I was like, nah, man, people gonna hear me singing. They gonna hear this shit. They gonna hear this part of me before you guys try to ruin it. Cause I know I'm never gonna feel like this again. I know I'm never gonna be in this place again, spiritually, mentally, physically. I'm never gonna feel like this, man. So I can't let you take this from me. I gotta drop this record. Not cause it's the hottest, cause it's me, my nigga. And I'm not trying to lose that part of me just cause y'all don't fuck me. So that's what Beautiful Demon came out. And in Savage America, so me and Sam released some shit called the Real Dope Dealers. Somebody in the label took my verse off and then released it. And then we released this shit. And then Rap Genius got my lyrics, got my name on the lyrics and shit. I'm like, oh, they got me fucked up. No Bro, no fucking mercy, bro. So rip everybody off that shit. Everybody can ask my big bro. I'm gonna pull on savage. Everybody get the fuck off the record. This is my record now. That's it. That's the real dope deal is. Same was like whatever. You know, they bro be giving me his blessing when I get savage. He like that shit sometimes. I don't know why. I keep on booking too. So he like when that shit come out of me, but whatever. Kicked everybody off the record, took his verse off, kept his chorus, his chorus is dumb high, and I just snapped on it, you know. And you no know, savage America, you know, like this shit is savage. Yeah, y'all don't even get how this song came about. Y'all got a couple of these songs came about, like, and you know. So fast forward. The, the the album the work that I was supposed to drop I Karumba never dropped I was like I right, man fuck that shit fuck that shit but then you know what I mean I got problems that's a part of me I can't let it go <laughs> <laughs> fuck that had to let that shit go so uh I had the producer up Rami he done he did shit with like Kaiser and LMFAO and Saint a bunch of other people Savage and me want to get here, come folks. I need that song, Pimp and Fire. You going to have to give me that. Like, cause they, and crazy thing is, Rami still got a couple of my songs. Rami, you better drop them shits, man. You heard? All right. <laughs> that, yo, that's how I am, man. Sometimes you gotta encourage niggas, like, that's what we doing. So at that time, I was like, Rami, you got a song. He's like, nah, man. Nah, I'm like, I'm looking around like, am I in the mansion, nigga? Like, what the fuck you mean? Nah. Like, nigga, that shit dropping. And the story behind I Columba is we went to LA for hard for hard fest. And you know, I was already shooting videos for a while now, and I've done some stuff with Snake, so they I felt more comfortable. Um, you know, following my vision, because I was like, yeah, I want the desert. I want uh three cars, because I, I I draw, so I understood something about color theory between red and blue. Red and blue, people don't know that when you put them together, it gets movement. It appears like the color is movement. They're complementary colors. They're co colors that do things that, you know, make you perceive a certain way. So I'm like, I want the red and blue car. Because if the car is moving and it's giving, I don't look, look. <laughs> the car is moving, it's giving movement. It made sense to me. Red and blue, desert, feel me. Yellow background, so it pop. My hair is, yeah, whatever, whatever. You know, we went out there, we argued, like big brother, little brother. I gave a fuck, like, I gave, sorry, no fucks, like little brother. Do what I had to do, which is why I'm here to inspire all little brothers worldwide. Look. Stop giving a fuck. I can run a drop, you know, three years later because I was, old. I dropped Beautiful Demon, I dropped um, South America. I was like, it's time ain't know the real Clinton. Cause that shit was just experimental shit. That was me like, yo, I'm about to experiment. And I know you guys don't know that. <laughs> so uh get ready. This is what I'm this is this is this is the beginning of what's gonna come. This this is just a, a taste of what I really see in my head, the melodies and the samples and the drums and the transitions. And now you know I got it way more down pack. But at that time I had to do it because they uh, 
those times they wanted what a little bit you and the music really transferred from beautiful being inside of savage america because at that time people were like more into like and let me go through the music in the last four years you went from soft rap to baby you love it i'm fucking you up in public i gotta double up everything get you fucking up the budget to you know riding with niggas i'm keeping my 40 she thinks she my shorty she knows she not shorty i'm 40 i keep me a 40 my niggas like 20 we shooting like music trend. and then we came, we, we started, they started being open to more indie, emo, uh, that pop shit that we was already doing. So I was like, I'm gonna give them a little bit. I'm gonna, this is shit I was already doing. I didn't think it was cool. I was just already me. I was like, ah. I'm like fuck it, I'm gonna give them a little bit. And then you see a lot of other artists, you know, labels watch, man. That's what you gotta realize. To all my young artists out there, labels watch. I've been in a lot of rooms where there you think you about to make a record, the first thing they go is you go, what are you doing? We're going to Spotify to see the hottest record. <laughs> you like, wait, what? Whoa! Believe, trust me, I got this. Type in some nigga you never heard of before. 85960. Look at him, he's hot, he's fired. This record, shit, you won't even do a record like this. You would never do this shit. This shit tight. This is what we're doing. And that's some of you guys, bro, that are putting out shit that's fire. And there's people watching and taking and utilizing it in ways that you can't. And I just want it to be that label I can find those people out there, you know, the real hot ones. Not the ones that are getting microwave because you can control them. The ones that can bring shit to this culture that I could never do. That I could never do. That we need them to do that we need people like that to create so it could make us better at whatever the fuck we doing.